Greetings, everyone. Nice to know that you survived the eclipse. Everyone's back. That was, that, was, that was tight, wasn't it? That was touch and go. Welcome in. It's episode number 545 of Three Guys Before the Game. This is our, let's see, what did I say it was? Oh, this gosh. was our spring football fling or spring fling football. Fling and football are together after spring. Okay. Something like that. Oh, did you hear that voice for those of you just listening and not watching? Oh, yeah, he's back. See him about as often as an eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> I come to work every eclipse. Whether he needs to or not. Yeah. Ready to go. The senator is here. Boy, what a weekend he had. Woo. Oh, we'll oh talk yeah. about that. Three guys before the game brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. Every piece of business equipment ever made. You name the product, they sell that, but they also offer absolute 24-7 monitoring of your business's network. They can come in, make sure everything is good, keep your data safe, come and do a free, uh, do a free inventory on your networking, and we call it a computer colonoscopy. They'll come in and tell you if your network is safe, from people on the attack is your data safe your clients data safe your personal data safe in your business they got it comax business systems and when it comes to those phone systems hoppy's got one digital digital phone system from one line to a thousand lines they got you covered at comax comaxwv.com three guys brought to us by gomart Go for good times, go for GoMart. Some incredible savings this month of April when you use your rewards card. We'll talk about that. They've redone the app. I mean, you're just like, you can save tons and get a lot of rewards off of that. Go for good times, go for GoMart, and go get your GoMart rewards card. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. After last week's Kind of cold-ish weather. I think we're past. I think we're done, Hop. You think so? I think. I think we're past that hurdle. Boy, last week was nasty. Yeah, it was. It was. And the guy I knew got sick, real sick last week, too. <laughs> Three guys is brought to us by Lou Wendell. Visit them at LouWendellMarineSales.com. You know, you think, Senator, if you take a week's vacation, you're going to want to be at 100% health, bouncy, just jumping around. Some guys don't have that luxury. Some guys remain on their back the entire week that they're gone. I was down. Have any idea where you got it? No. I thought I'd, I was quizzed about that by my spouse. I said, I don't know, but I just got, and I don't handle sickness terribly well, frankly. Uh-huh. And, and so I was just down. It was, it was an over-the-counter med, three-nap-a-day, extended viewing of Ted Lasso <laughs> sickness. Had you not gone through Lasso in its entirety before, you were doing a rewatch? No, it's his first time. What do you think? Well, I like it a lot. Yeah, it's really yeah, good. It's, it's got a, you know what it has? It, it, uh, it's got a sports angle, which you enjoy. Got a lot of heart. Oh, yeah. Got a lot of heart, so I, I enjoy it. Yeah, and it's not, just, it's not just overly sarcastic or cynical. And, uh, yeah, we're enjoying it. Yeah. Enjoying it a lot. Yeah. That in like the morning it. show. The morning show? No. Jennifer Aniston and about a morning? No. Okay, never mind. You've seen, you've seen the whole Lasso I thing? don't watch TV. Yeah, I watched the Lasso was the only thing I've ever watched in the last 30 years. <laughs> Reese Witherspoon in the morning show? Exactly. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Senator, how are you? Fine. Physically good? Great. Sure? Sure. Great. Nothing good came man. out of the weekend? No. You didn't get hurt at camp? Nope. Camp. So you always have bemoaned the fact that a lot of schools missed when you came out from high school, you, mm-hmm. you attack Eldon Miller, who not Tom Missed. Davis. Missed. Well, Tom offered, but, wasn't a full scholarship, but right. But so the but you did receive a Tom Abedamarco, right at Drake, Dwayne Banks, the Iowa baseball coach, all walk ons. No one would give me any money. So Neil Brown extended <laughs> you a full scholarship to fantasy camp this weekend. You nice. accepted. He didn't miss. <laughs> <laughs> coach Brown on it. Recognized talent. Did you entertain other offers or just took the first offer no, that came dr- from? Dream school. 
There you go. Dream school. <laughs> Hashtag dream school. He made the offer. I took it right on the spot on my visit. <laughs> on your visit. Please, please respect my decision. Fill us in. I did have a, in all seriousness, had a great time. So football, West Virginia football and the Country Rose Trust hosted their first ever fantasy camp over the weekend. It was really, <laughs> it was, a, it was a lot of fun. We'll talk about the on-field stuff in a minute. But I thought the the neatest part was not only access to Neil and the assistants and the staff that were around, but they brought back four great former players, Bruce Irvin, Avon Coburn, Carl Joseph, and David Sills. Wow. And they not only were around, and, and we did a question and answer with them, but they uh, they interacted. They were there the whole weekend at, at lunch with us and, and moving about. So you really got a chance to to talk to those guys. And that that's four, that's four dudes, right? Yeah. Not only great yeah. players, every one of them, it was fantastic to – to talk to them and interact, so they were great. So I thought that that was probably the highlight for everybody is getting to see getting to see those folks. And and after that, did the did the offer then come after that for you to be? Well, on the I was team? already in. Yeah, so it was one of those recruiting visits where I was already committed, but just there to okay to finalize. Okay, so I was there, but you know, did they gave everybody a tour of the facilities, which are just jaw dropping. I've said this many times. Hop, I, I mean, we've been over in that facilities yeah. building how many times over the years? Yeah unrecognizable to what you would remember. Yeah. They you'd could drop lost. you at Arkansas, at UCLA, at USC, and you'd recognize it as much as you'd recognize the West Virginia building. Mm. Incredible what they've done with the inside of that mm -hmm. building. No question about that. So we'll talk more about that coming up uh, a little bit later on. Spring football is going on and getting to the point now where you're going to get some significant scrimmages uh, that will be behind closed doors and uh, at that point right now. But the basic theme is that so far, so good. Uh, you talk and you hear from the coaches, and they seem to be content with what they're seeing both on the field and just chemistry, culture, are a couple of the words that continue to be kicked around. So that's what it is in spring. That's what you hope for. Uh, no great drama this particular year. You don't have a massive quarterback battle. You don't have a massive running back battle you know who those dudes are and you share carries and we get that receivers uh, they were all out there last season in diapers uh, they might uh, they might elevate to training pants this year but they had the three babies out there at times last year those guys are all growing up and then the newcomers so so far so good from football time now for hoppy's obvious observations h o o soon to be having a sponsor it'll have a sponsor here pretty soon and uh, would you like to care to, to make some obvious observations? One of the things that Garrett Greed has talked about uh, in the offseason was getting better, right? Improving, working on his footwork or working on his delivery and just being better. Brad, last year in 12 games, he completed 53%. I don't want to get in spreads on stats here, but some of it is. He completed 53% of his passes last year. It was last in the league. So I looked at the other quarterbacks in the league, and I took out – I took out Dylan Gabriel. I took, about Quinn, I took out Quinn Ewers. I mean, they completed 70% of their passes. That's really, that's, that's the aberration. The average was about 62 to 64% completion of everybody else in the league. So I even went below that. What if Garrett Green could improve from 53% to 60%? That's seven percentage points. I think it's fair. Uh, Senator, would you agree that'd be a fair? Keep going. Seven percentage points. That's a 13% increase. You get it? I mean, seven percentage points, but it's a 13% increase over 53%. You follow me? Yes. Okay. So then apply that to his numbers from last year. So if he improves by 13%, and this is just running numbers. It doesn't exactly equate this way. If he had 13% more completions, he'd go from 147 to 166. So that's, you know, plus, that's plus 19. Right. That's 19 more completions, you know, roughly, roughly to a game. Okay. Maybe they come at critical times, right? Or maybe one game you don't complete as many, maybe another game you complete four more than you do. But maybe some of those are at critical times. So 19 more completions. What if you improve touchdown passes by 13%? That's from 16 to 18. Two more touchdown passes. What about yards per game? If you improve by 13%, you go from 200 to 226 yards. I think that if you improve just 13% and you, you can improve on completion percentage, you can improve on number of completions, touchdown passes, and yards, that to me, it, that's another win. 
Okay, that's another win or maybe another win or two. That's another couple first downs that you don't otherwise get. And that 53%, that's not all on him because there were drop passes, there were defensive plays, there was pr- pressure, those kinds of things. So other, other people get to play too. But if you can improve your output at the quarterback position, which he is striving to do, by 13%, I think you you can equate that to see how that can tra- translate to another win or two this coming season. So I think the biggest thing there is what you just said about the receivers. To me, the more I look at this team, and I, this is going to be a really fun spring and summer because I started to make some notes here about what to talk about for spring football. You realize how much there is to talk about? This is unbelievable, the amount of different things we can get into with some optimism and some hope and some improvement. So Garrett is about as low on the list as I can get for people that I'm, I'm wondering about this spring. Because I'll say it again, he was elite last year. That wasn't just a good season for Western quarterback. It wasn't just a good Big 12 season. That was a national level dude. And if some of those completion numbers go up a little bit and you keep everything else static, but what do I always say? You can't just assume everything moves forward, but I'm excited to watch what he does after now knowing the offense for a year, after reading defenses for a year. I think there's a chance for him to take a big step forward, but it's the receivers catching the ball and catching balls that aren't exactly on the money that I think is where the difference comes in because that's the thing that I think was missing last year. There were there were still drops. There were still balls that were overthrown, yes, but you didn't get to. And here's an example, Tony. You saw it. We were standing right there watching it. That catch Rodney Gallagher made a couple of weeks ago in practice, Hoppy, was it would have stacked up as the best catch you saw all of last season. So how many of those are in there? Yeah. Does that happen a couple of times? Does Traylon Ray make some more catches? Does Clement? I think this receiver group has a chance to really take a massive step forward. That might be the part of the offense where we come back during the season or afterwards and go, how about those receivers? Never mind Jaden Bray, who's coming along, the Oklahoma right. State transfer. I think those young guys, the the Ray Gallagher, who's the third one I'm missing? Uh, Huddy. Clement. Those three are really talented. I think they have a chance to massively jump up, understanding how to run routes, understanding how to set up the defensive back and cut the other way. I think that's what helps Garrett's accuracy, maybe more than anything that he personally does, although he's working like crazy on those passes. I think that receiver room could be really, really fun. When you were out there Saturday watching practice, how the ball zip out? Pretty good. Yeah, I mean, Garrett's arm is fantastic. I mean, it it zips, and those guys are catching it. And I think Nico's arm looks demonstrably stronger. I think he looks excellent as well. That's probably – we won't talk about that until the time comes in which Nico has to start a game and then wins, and then we'll gush about how great that is. That was a that was a good get for, yes. for Neil Brown yeah. to keep a competent backup like that that can step right in and play if and when Garrett goes down. And given Garrett's mm-hmm. style, that's always something you worry about. But I, I thought the quarterback room has looked tremendous in the, the limited time I've seen them. Mm-hmm. And as you said, I think you're right. So you could make – you could talk a lot in the spring season about receivers, offensive line, and, the you know, the – not a massive rebuild, but re, replacing people – and plugging new people in. You can have that conversation. Running backs, super interesting. Like, if your big topic is who's your third, that's a, that, that means you're in a pretty yeah. good position. Tight ends, and, and- Cole Taylor's sitting down this spring, but you've got the development there. And then defense, you could do the whole same, same well, thing. Well, we're going to spend some time on defense because I got, I got 10 guys we got to talk about defensively. Excuse me? Stay on the offense for a second because I think offensive line becomes the number one question here because I get the sense that early on we're, we're – we're too quickly going, Zach Frazier was awesome. Ah, they'll be okay. Zach Frazier was awesome, capital A, all caps. Well, you, you, could make a, you could make the case he's the best center ever at West Virginia. So that's and we've had re- some centers. Yes. That's really hard. That's a group we, we've talked about this many times. You lead Power 5 in rushing. Five penalties a game, only 46 penalty yards a game. That was about as good of offensive line performance as you can get. They were elite, elite. Never mind Doug Nestor's gone. He's going to get a chance to play in the league, too. You can't gloss over the the changes that are coming on that line. So to me, the question becomes, what's the line look like? Asking it to be the best Power 5 rushing attack in America is probably asking too much. But where does it stack up? Is it still really, really good? Is it just good? You've got a bunch of guys that have played. But Brandon Yates in a new position. Jaquay, our guy from the last podcast, now starting every game. Nick Malone, who was invaluable. And all three of those guys were very, very good last year. But now you're asking them to play all the snaps. And then beyond that, the next layer, these young guys that we've been hearing about now for a year or two, that there's a lot of potential. There's potential pros. 
How do they mix in? Is there a drop-off when they come in? So the performance of the offensive line is still going to drive this team. Agreed. So I think it's fair to say the offensive line isn't going to be as good as last year's. You have to say that. It would be impossible, impossible. to get there, I Okay. Think. So to your point, so then where does it go to? Is it still a top 25 rushing offense in the country? You'd take that today. Or does it significantly fall back? My lean is that it'll be a good quality offensive line. I think so too. And we probably didn't we probably didn't give last year's line enough credit didn't. while it was happening in front of our eyes. Did not. It was unbelievable the performance they they turned in. But the but so here's the question. Okay, so it comes back a little bit cuz you lost the best of all time at one of the positions at the most important position. Okay, fine. But if your passing game then steps forward, and you're more dangerous there, you might end up in the same place. You might not have to be the number one rushing team in America to get similar results. That's yes. what you're trying to juggle there is, okay, that's fine. We got other guys now learning new positions. Fine, guess what? We now have receivers that didn't know exactly what they were doing last year and hadn't even come close to their full potential. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the give and take right there. And then again, Garrett's just going to be an eraser on some mistakes. Right, there's yeah. going to be guys that are blitzing off the corner that you miss your assignment or you miss your block, or somebody turns the wrong way. And you, it's the other thing, Hoppy. It's such intricate play. It's amazing there's not more mistakes than what happened. But when mistakes happen, Garrett Green can erase those just by taking off. So I, I can't wait to watch this offense. I think it's got a chance to be outstanding again. Let's jump over to defense because I think that's the part. If you're really digging down this spring, you can kind of take the offense and set it aside and and figure it's going to be really good. Right, second year for a quarterback, all that talent, skill positions, experience, line. You have, you should have high expectations for that offense. How about defensively? If you talk to those guys, that they're they're excited about some individuals. The Brown mentioned index is starting to, to rack up some numbers. Let's look at a couple. You want to? Did he take you to a side at all during fantasy camp and give you any like whisper? Any Brown mentioned the B BMW? Yeah. Brown mentioned whisper. Well, those would be private conversations that I'm not going to divulge. I'll keep those. What, I, what I, they always keep those between ourselves. <laughs> but did he? Okay, you don't have to tell me what he said. But did did you get a B, BMW? Brown mentioned whisper. Are you the Are you the uh, Neil Brown whisperer? No. Did, at no time did he definitely, come to you. Did he give not. you this one? Hey, I'm just telling you what. Take a look at 13 over there. 16. Well, let's 16. talk about some guys. Okay, so could this? Maybe be something he said, but you're not going to say that he said it? No, there's a lot of people over in that building. So you're saying this is fresh fruit? No, I'm just saying let's talk about some guys. I mean, you don't have to be over in the building to know what I'm about to say to you. Is this good stuff? Well, I think it is. I think it's a good conversation starter. Okay. The fact of the sheer numbers I'm about to give you, I think that makes it a great conversation. All right, Hoppy and I'll judge. Go ahead. You ready? Mm -hmm. Let's start at the cornerback position. The The BMI is really high on uh, – Aiden Garns, transfer from Duquesne. Mm -hmm. How many times he keep coming up? Lots. Lots. Great speed, Hoppy. Quote from Neil the other day. This was public. Can run stride for stride with EJ, who's as fast as anybody will play against, EJ Horton, receiver. So they love Aiden Garns. And we've seen that profile work here, have mm -hmm. we not? Mm -hmm. Alonzo Adai came in, lower level, elevated up, was really good. Charles Woods came in, lower level, elevated up, was really good. Uh, Beanie Bishop, hello. I know he came directly from Minnesota, but before that, lower level, elevated up, turned into an All-American. So that profile defensive back-wise has really worked. Aiden Garns is getting mentioned a lot. They like him at the corner. Did you eye him up this weekend? Garnett Hollis. <laughs> Did you eye up Garns? Do you like him? He like, looks long. What's he look like? Garnett Hollis, one of the Northwestern transfers. Familiar. Also very, very good. Neil thinks he's an NFL player. That's two corners right there. Hoppy, two corners, position of need, two corners, really good. Now, go to the linebacker position, because this is the one to watch, If, in my opinion. That's been a position going back years, guys, that it seems like when West Virginia gets in injury trouble, it almost always is the linebackers. How many different seasons have, have we watched the team limp to the finish line just trying to plug holes at linebackers, right? You're trying to bring safety downs that aren't big enough. Back in the old Gibby days, you did that a few times. Last year, you just had injury after injury at that position. This year, it feels, and again, you don't know what's going to happen on that front, but you've got some dudes. When Trey Lathan returns, right? I was yep, a freshman yep. All-American. He was headed for a monster season. Then just look at couple of the guys. Ben Cutter got a ton of experience. Yes, he did. Caden Beiser played a, a big role, so he can mix in there. But then 
that Josiah Trotter's a guy we probably haven't talked about enough because he got injured last year, of course, early. Uh, he's a dude. <laughs> he's, he's a dude. I think he's going to step right in and make some plays. Well, they penciled him in as a potential starter last year before he got hurt as, as a, a true, true freshman, freshman hobby. Yeah. He gets it. He's impressing. Yeah. He he's impressing. It. Reed Carrico, former four-star recruit that went to Ohio State that's now coming in. Neil described him as, as hungry. You like talented guys that are hungry, right? Which would make sense. A guy that didn't play as much as he wanted at Ohio State is getting a fresh start here for a chance to come in and play. Reed Carrico. So there's some linebackers right there that you, you feel like you've got some depth maybe for the first time in, I mean, I don't know how many years. Yeah. So that's encouraging. All right, now go along the defensive line because pass rushers in particular are in high demand. They have got to find some guys that can pressure the pass rusher. So there's guys that we already know about. Sean Martin. Sean Martin continues. That's not, that's not the first time we've stood next to Sean Martin, Tony. He is a massive individual. Large human. He is. They don't make a lot of humans like him, Hoppy. And he's had a good spring so far through the first couple of weeks. So there's a pass rusher in Sean Martin that hopefully he turns into what everybody foresaw him being when he came out of high school. Bluefield here. But then the two guys to watch are the new guys, and we've talked a lot about them. Ty French, the Gardner-Webb transfer, and TJ Jackson, the Troy transfer. Both have really impressed over there and could be difference makers. If they can translate up to this level, Hoppy, and get pressures on the quarterback, and then you've got good defensive backs, and oh, by the way, you have good linebackers, that defense has a chance to really take a step forward this year. And it was really good early last year. Remember, it won West Virginia some games early before that offense figured out what it was doing and got everybody healthy and started mm -hmm. to take over down the stretch. I, I'm excited to watch this defense. There's some individuals there that you should uh, really be keeping an eye on. Where where are things with the portal now? Are you going to get portaled at all after spring? Yeah, both ways. There will be guys that will leave, yes, because that always happens, right? Because Two things. Guys are going to see maybe they weren't getting enough snaps in spring. It didn't go exactly like they wanted. And or, for some of your good guys, you're going to get teams coming out of the spring that are desperate, that looked at their roster and went, uh, you know what, we do not have X. So then they're, they have already combed rosters, and they're going to start, which is technically illegal, I realize, but there's going to be some contact made with some offers put forth. So, yeah, you're going to have to hang on to your portal, but also, guess what else happens? You can Other go guys are going to come out of spring practice at Alabama, at Clemson, Ohio State, and go, you know what, this is what I thought it was. It, it, it seems, and again, there's some time to... There's time remaining, but it seems like West Virginia remained remarkably stable in the offseason. It did, but that is the bell curve of the portal after getting absolutely pillaged a couple of years ago and used, losing six defensive starters. Um, you're right. West Virginia has solidified itself. It's fortified itself uh, much more better position to kind of retain the guys that you want to retain. And obviously, you're always – way before the portal ever started, I'm talking forever ago, guys were going to leave after spring ball when they realized most of the time it was to drop down a division or, you know, level so that they could play. Um, but so you're always going to have that. But it's the guys that you want to stay that you don't. Obviously, yep. those are the ones you don't want to lose. I mean, but so far, you haven't been like a couple years ago where you just got plucked. No, no but no. As, as I've said many times on that show, some of that plucking was, was circumstances that will not repeat themselves. Those, those were... Those were rare circumstances that that weren't going to be a consistent pattern. It was a it was almost a one off event. You also have heard me say many times the the market's going to level itself out, right? It's going to settle down into a place that you can manage, and then you went out and won, and you've and you've got the culture where you want it for right now. So that's easier to retain. And then also here's what you have too, Hoppy. Let's just be honest about this. You've got some leverage if you're Neil Brown. You got some guys coming in saying, "I you you got to give me more. You got to give me more." And he has the luxury now of saying. That, that's what I have for you. If that's not good, go ahead and test the market. Mm -hmm. And then when you test the market and leave, I'm backfilling with guys that might have been better than what left. Yeah. And that didn't exist two years ago. And part of that's because the market's maturing a little bit, and West Virginia now has a handle on what the market is. You know what you have via the trust in terms of dollars. You know from a personnel standpoint now, you've been scouting the whole season. So when it hits, you know exactly what you're looking for. So the whole operation has stabilized a little bit. And that's not just West Virginia. I mean, that specifically is West Virginia, but the whole market's starting to stabilize all over. Mm -hmm. Now people, okay, we got it. What are the rules? Let's play by. I got them. Mm -hmm. I got it. I understand how to do it now. It's just so that helps you. Yeah, it's becoming more and more professional. The NCAA uh, has come out now, and again, always a West Virginia connection. Uh, the head of the NCAA, 
Charlie Baker, saying that the NCAA is not going to oppose the basic decision that came out of the federal court in Wheeling during the Raekwon battle situation, and it's going to open the door for transfer as much as you want to transfer. About the only thing you can't do now is play at one school one semester and then go to that school and be eligible the second semester. Other than that, you can transfer four times. That's going to be the rule. Well, so do we, do we need any more to underscore how wild this has become? And that's the rule right now. That's not a new rule. He's only saying that because they're not going to go challenge it in court. Correct. Because why? Because they were going to lose it in they're court. They've lose. already lost once. They were going to lose again. Right. So that's where it is. So, yeah, until the, the collective bargaining comes in and you put some parameters in place, it's, it's going to be this. But West Virginia is in a better position. That doesn't mean you're not going to have a, a loss somewhere in the portal that we come in and go, oh, wish you didn't. But, okay, you know what you're dealing with now. And as long as you know what your salary cap is and what positions you need, you can manage yeah. a little bit better. And then when you win, oh, by the way, does that help? Sure. Yeah, sure. because if guys want to, okay, go ahead. Try. The, thanks for being with us. Go ahead. And then you go bring other players in on, on top of it. That's where they are right now. WVU defensive line coach Andrew Jackson has done a really good job with that group uh, since coming on board. And earlier this week he met with reporters. And one of the things that I think you guys would all agree that the staff didn't feel they had down enough when they first got here was physicality. And Andrew Jackson addressed physicality uh, coming out of practice earlier this week, and it has done a 180. We're physical. It, yeah. this, I, I've had very talented groups here. This is the most physical group I have. You know, going against Zach Frazier all those years for some of the guys that have been in the room, Doug Nestor, Wyatt Malum, and, and just those guys uh, uh, spurring competition, and then just pointing out good examples of defensive line play and how physicality can overcome a lot of things on tape. I think those guys have really, truly embraced it. And we've done a great job just building that, uh, you know, as an example on defense in general, you know, just, just uh, you know, not appearing to be soft and, and being able to put your hands on people and your shoulder pads on folks too. So this thing, this thing is always a build, right? And what he's saying there is this. When you finally stabilize this program and got the guys you need it, the Milams, the Nesters, the Frasers, they set a new standard. Yes. They built a foundation. Now you feed those guys as a result that played against them got better. So in a perfect world, this just continues to build and build and build and build. Great programs get a culture that is just everyone knows as they come in, this is how we do things here. I really believe that when Neil first got here, there was none of that. No, every everyone was pointing into a different direction. He had to corral it all and say this is what the normal is this is what we're doing and Frazier and all of those guys will should always be credited with setting the new normal and so you've you've he's built the program he's established as you said Tony the new normal you have in Garrett Green you have a great leader you have a leader that you have somebody that people follow mm -hmm. okay so now you're now you're in a pretty good shape I mean consider where you were a year ago I mean, you you knew a year ago, like you're close here. You could you could be very close, and they did in fact complete that circle. It's not complete, but they you know, finished the circle to get to the next level. So you head into this year much more optimistic than you were. So it's a 180. A year ago. It's, a, it's a 180 in in regard to where we were emotionally. Let's face it. A year ago, everyone was going like this: flip a coin. Is this gonna is this gonna work or not work? If it doesn't work, everything's getting blown up. That yeah. was it. That oh, was yeah, the reality. Absolutely. It's it's no one even thinks that now because they go in there and go, okay, we're, we, we, we're boosting up. Win nine, you win a bowl game, it changes the entire complexion absolutely. of your offseason and your program. Now, the next hard part is, okay, now do something comparable to that again. Mm -hmm. Then you really start going. The culture discussion is massive. The 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 culture <laughs> stuff can't be overstated. And I know sometimes even, even I poo-poo that when coaches start on that. Because you're uh, okay. I mean, go handle your business. Stop with the culture stuff. It's always the culture stuff. But you, re you really can't win without it, Hoppy. I mean, Tony, you just said it a minute ago. Frazier and those guys should be credited for a long time for that. That's really true. And, and as you watch this younger group of linemen grow up and take the reins here, I think that's what you have to point back to. Zach arrives as a freshman, really talented and very, very good. But who's he looking at in the room? All due respect to everybody that was there. But the, not really. You look around, and who was Zach supposed to model himself after? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, then Zach becomes a sophomore, and now he's going into his second year starting. And then he's a junior. Well, now all of a sudden, who's the room looking at? And Zach Fraser's in there working his butt off, handling his business, extra film. Nobody's watched more film than Zach. What did Jaquay Hubbard tell us the other day? Right? All those guys are now elevated up, even if Fraser never said a word. And then you add Nestor into the mix, who's a professional level guy. And then, oh, by the way, here comes Wyatt Milam growing up. So now suddenly that room, and then Remac mixes in. And then you've got a great dude in Yates, and you've got Jaquay Hubbard. And suddenly that room, that's a pretty damn good room, right? Nestor is easy to be around. Frazier, easy to be around. Jaquay Hubbard smiling. Wyatt Milam is a great dude. That, that's a good culture-based room. And that unit becomes your best unit? Well, what's everybody else on the team now have to do? Hmm. Hard to be a jack leg when you got that group running things, right? And so the jack legs now have to be a little bit more quiet. And they get a little smaller piece of that locker room. And they can't infect the locker room anymore because the best unit is your best guys. And they're standing there. Is that right? Is that right? Here's what we're going to do. Come on. Come on with it. And so that's how that culture yep. starts to flip, and that leads directly to wins. It's not just in sports. It's in everyday life. It's in business, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You get the right people in your business that have the right mindset, and it translates to everyone else, or those that don't buy in, they go away. Want an example? Because if the boss or the coach has to come into that meeting room and you walk into the meeting room and everybody's got their feet up on the desk and they're grab assing and they're jacking around and you've got to straighten them out every single day, guess what? That unit's not going to be yeah. successful. Well, like coaches will always say, if, if I've got a coach effort, I got no shot. Hmm. I got a coach effort, right? I look at here. Look at this company over the course of 40 years. Dale Miller comes in. You come in. Obsessive, compulsive work <laughs> effort. No, seriously. <laughs> Obsessive, compulsive work ethics. And everyone sees that. Jeff Jenkins comes in, obsessive compulsive work ethic. It just it trickles down. If you don't, if you don't, if you're not riding that right wave, then you're you're going to go bye bye. And everyone looks at that, and that they know that's the standard. Mm -hmm. But then those people have to individually get on their horse and go. And if they don't, it's not going to work. 100%. It's just not going to work. Exactly. So exactly. you can see it, but you better do it and be held accountable to it, or it's not going to matter. But you've got to be driven by people that want to do the work and put the work in. And you know, That's Brad, when your culture starts to flip. And then the other part is that you get a result. Yeah. Okay. So it reinforces yes. the good culture. So, yeah, yeah good you're point. like, what am I doing all this stuff? And, you know, Frazier's on my – why am I doing all this? Oh, you're winning. Good point. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So the actions produce the fruit. results. Yeah. Plant the seeds. You get know, the like, fruit. oh, this is how it works. And then that continues the story. Right. Because then as the leader of the coach, you can go in and you say, hey, hey, freshman lineman, you want me to tell you about Zach Frazier? You want to tell me how that – and boom, then that continues the story. Yeah. Three guys before the I'm game. I'm excited. Let's go. When's the first game? Uh, not for a while. Three guys before the game is brought to us by GoMart. All three of us have GoMart rewards cards. And how about this in the month of April? Calling all snack champions. Calling all snack champions. Spring into action this spring, and your hunger cravings will be filled with GoMart. Until April 30, you can throw down a chance to win big. Each Slim Jim and C4 Energy purchase will make a powerful punch of rewards. You'll get extra points, score game tokens. You get five tokens. You score a knockout, which gives you 3,000 Bonus points, plus enter the sweepstakes for a chance to win a $500 GoMart gift card. Now, that'd be kind of neat, wouldn't it? Yeah. Get the full rundown on the GoMart app. Visit GoMart.com. It's going for good times. It's go for GoMart. Did you, uh, as a camper, did you pull the traditional uh, football guy uh, as a, uh, I don't know if you played offense or defense during this camp, but did you look, your, look down your nose at the special teams performers? No, that was part of the camp. Did, you treat, him, did was, you treat him with respect? There was an opportunity to punt and kick for the campers. Was it like a what punt, pass, and did kick? You, yes, it, was, it actually was a punt, pass, and kick competition. What did you do? Did you kick or field? No, you know what I did? So here, so you, are we going into this now? You want to talk about fantasy camp for a minute? I mean, I guess. You want to hold? Or what do you got? No, I think we get into it. But here, here's the – Hoppy, you'll appreciate this. Yes. Is there comes a point in your life <laughs> – A seminal moment? Seminal moment. When the competitiveness that you either once had or still have where you're going. has to take a back seat 
<laughs> to what age should bring you, yes. which is wisdom right. and understanding. <laughs> yes. And being self-actualized enough. <laughs> or soft. That I don't need to run out there and try and run a sub nine flat 40 <laughs> with the potential risk of an injury that causes weeks of okay. inconvenience. So you didn't do the 40? So the first event up, Ryan Nealon was the one that did the on-field stuff. He ran the on-field stuff, did a tremendous job. He got, he got a little coaching in him. Good, well, yeah, DNA, good yeah, DNA for Ryan. His granddad a, used to coach over here at the college. Heard of him. <laughs> Does a great job. So Ryan's out there. He's getting everybody going. And first up was the 40-yard dash hop. Okay. Now, remember, I'm the same guy that pulled a hammy last year pitching batting practice and softball. Like, I know my limitations now. I'm well past my prime. Okay. So the 40-yard dash is up first. So Ryan says, Brett, come on, you're up. I said, I'm absolutely not up. <laughs> I'll do respect, Ryan. I will not be running. <laughs> you I give go. a lot of credit to my guy, C.J. Donaldson, who's standing right next to me. Yeah. C.J. says in my ear, tell him you're deferring to the second half. Just defer it to the second half. <laughs> it's not a coin flip. It was. I said, I'm out. Not doing what it. What about Bruce Irvin? What did he say? Uh, hey, Bruce was chirping. Bruce is still competitive. I got a good Bruce Irvin story. He, he'll hit you right in the face. Well, Yeah. Still competitive. So that's what I'm saying. You've got to work through. There's there's a lot of people out there that there's some encouragement to do the, all of the things. Did some of the campers run? Well, uh, some of them did. Did anyone get hurt? Yeah, my guy Charlie. <laughs> Might have had a groin issue. Third runner out of the gate. Might have had a groin issue. He's a tough SOB, though. He did every drill from there on out with a pulled groin. With a pull, Well, a football oh. player. Gamer. Yeah. I did so a you few didn't, things. Did you throw? I threw. Through. How'd you do? Eh, okay, didn't hit the net. Right on target, just left it short. Oh, this is not distance. This is hit the we net. We were working on the net in the corner, like the fade. Okay. Oh, the fade. Yeah. Oh, the fade. The <laughs> faded fade. See why I hate fade? Get out there, try and throw the fade. Can't throw the fade. Leave it short. Did, did run a pass pattern. Ran a fade. I'm probably not the ideal guy for the fade. <laughs> Austin, you got that picture there? I'll show you the effort I gave. Gave great effort. Oh, <laughs> gave great God. effort. Who threw it? That looks like that ball Jaheim was... was throwing to me. Okay. Jaheim, it, look, it, looks like, it looks like it was too far ahead. Well, Jaheim overestimated my speed. I wasn't. Where's, I was a lot slower than what I think he where's thought. Where's the? I tell you, I give you credit because obviously you put a move on the defender. Oh, well, I'm wide open. There's no defender there. Well, well there, there was no defender. Air. It yeah, was against there. Air. See, so, Ryan Nealon in the back thinks I have it. He's got so, it. So Jaheim can throw the ball well. He he got a little. Here's little. the thing. Like Nico's a very capable backup. I think you got to put a little halfback pass in there for Jaheim White. He can throw it. Yeah. I might put a little tackle pass in there for Wyatt Milam. Milam might well, have Milam the best arm on the team. Milam was a great high school Could pitcher. have been a Major League Baseball sure. player. Do you know that? Wyatt no. Milam could have been a Major League Baseball well, player. I remember him when he was young. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I'm being serious. So you want to... He was elite as a freshman in high school. He was throwing what as a freshman? In the he, he got, I think it was into his sophomore year. He got it up, he told me, in 91, 92. Sophomore. As a six six lefty with <laughs> perfect form. I mean, seriously, he would have been. Now, he's going to make a ton of money as an NFL player. He, he absolutely could have been a, a major league baseball player. I mean, he was elite elite. Jeez. So you don't see many tackles that can take the ball and say, where's the net? Okay, I got it. I'm just going to drop it in there. He was very good. You think Neil might pull a little something in there for him? I don't know how you get the tackle to throw the ball, but I might well, line him up, up as line him up, up as in a, a tight fullback end. position or line tight end. Line up as a tight end. Run him in. I want him throwing it, not catching it. I understand. He can, he can yeah, but he can line up as a tight end. Don't he can get, kind of come back. He can't. Don't get too clever by half now. Like I well, have the tackle pass it and fool everybody. I let him pass. If he wants to just stop back and shotgun and take the snap, he can do it. He could and just like fake the pass and run it. No, just gun. throw it. He's got a great arm. Okay. So that's the other part of, uh, in all seriousness, about the camp. And I'll give you a couple more things here. But the culture, the guys that were out there that were that were working with the trust, that were the current players. I mean, you're talking about Milam and Garrett and Trotter and Clement and Jaheim White and CJ and Sean Martin. I mean, all the guys that, that we just talked about that are going to play. And they're out there interacting and great dudes and talking to you. Yeah. I mean, he's he's got a nice culture built right now. So you didn't complete the pass you didn't do the 40 you didn't catch the fade <laughs> right let's go to the highlights go to the highlights well i don't know that there were a lot of highlights on the field i declined to catch the punt really well we didn't have a helmet i thought that my luck i'll miss it it'll hit me in the nose i've broken nose won't oh my camera. god you could have at least tried to catch the punt i'll just tell you right now what do you want to put on the line that you won't catch the punt? I didn't say I would, but at least well, I wouldn't you're not think about it. I would not have thought about putting a helmet on. Good. You're, we're going to go out I there. would never have thought about putting a helmet on. i him right into this. Now he's going to have to go catch a punt. Yeah. You're going to challenge the guy that killed a boar. You might Fine. not, you might not get your hand on Fine. the ball. 
I didn't say I could catch it. I said I wouldn't ask for a helmet. Well, you should That's ask what for I'm a, saying. You should ask for a helmet. Papa, you wouldn't ask for a helmet to catch a punt. No, Kerchival should definitely ask for a helmet. You I, would I, misjudge that so badly, and then your nose is in play. <laughs> well, I think in fairness... No, well, there I'm is not, no I'm, fairness. Do you, you don't want to be out there trying to catch it either, so I just go ahead and back I'm down not, on the well, conversation. I'm, here's what I'm going to say, is that you were going... The point you were making is where I am anyway at my age. Like, I still go out and exercise and run, and my head is Advanced saying age. that I can do this. Yeah, you, and my body is saying, what are you doing? You can't do yeah. that. You can't do that. So, so it becomes, and you don't recover. There's just... Yeah, you can't do it's it. It's aging. Right. You know, I'm not saying, oh, but it's aging. No, it just is what it is. And, you, and, and also, you don't do it every day. Like, Pac-Man <laughs> Fox should be catching the punts. I don't need right. to be back there catching the punt. <laughs> it would have been fun, though. I think you could have. You could handle a punt. Maybe. Also, may get hit right in the face and your nose is down. <laughs> you would not have got hit in the face. No, you would have got your hands on it. Maybe you might have broke a finger. <laughs> this is the risk-reward there. <laughs> well, I enjoyed watching everybody else do it. I'm not doing it. No one sneered at you like Neil didn't look at you or anything like that? Neil, Neil was recruiting at that particular moment. Yeah, they all sneered at you. They That's do. what I'm saying. At some point, you got to be self-actualized, you, don't you? You do. You do. That's you. You were showing, I think you were demonstrating... Yeah, self self awareness, self actual. If you're self actualized, it none of this bothers you. Didn't bother. You're okay. I mean, you can tell me all you want. I'm not still not catching the. I'm not going to run the forty. I think when you were throwing the fade, that would have been good if, if Bruce Irvin had come come off the corner at you. <laughs> well, then I'd need Milam in front of me to pick up the blitz. <laughs> <laughs> if, now, you guys weren't in pants. Did you put pants on? Well, yeah, we we did we did put the uniform on. Excuse me. We did put the uniform oh. on. And I wasn't going to do it. Didn't do it. They, they, this was this really was maybe the highlight for everybody in there. You put the uniform. So you on? went you went in the room, like the recruiting room, and they had all the uniforms lined up, and they had helmets for you, and they had jerseys, they had the pants, oh. they had the gloves, the whole thing. You could put the full uniform on, and then immediately head over to the areas where the where you see all the recruits with their hands get up, your picture and, the made. and then they're doing they get your picture made. the The best part of it was my guy Ashton, Ashton and his mom and dad were there. Ashton immediately puts the uniform on. I think we got a picture of Ashton and his dad here. He puts the full uniform on. He's in, he's a six-year-old. Oh, oh, little guy. He puts the full uniform on <laughs> and goes immediately to the, there's a stairwell with all the graphics where you can get in and, and do the do the poses. Posing? Yeah. He didn't need any direction. He just stepped out and had it. He's six? I mean, he stepped in, pointed, gave you gloves, gave <laughs> you this. Then they have a a small room that's like done up like a real coal mine. So you can get like a coal mine oh, background okay. and there's a, there's a real pickaxe in there. <laughs> Ashton goes in, just picks the pickaxe up, puts it over his shoulder he's, and then stands there. Like he's knew six? exactly what to do. He's six. Six. Now he did all the drills. Well, sure. About six different times. <laughs> Ashton was locked in. Did he get offered? Uh, uh, if he didn't, he should have. Yeah. He was totally down there. So I went ahead just for the sake of this show. Yeah. I wasn't going to do it. But you got to, yeah. You gotta and do I it say, for you know show. what? Because Kerchival will like to see this. Yes. I'm putting the, I'm putting the uniform on. All right, Can you see. put the picture up? Oh. What's your number? 84? No, I did a Zach Fraser tribute. Okay. You got the gloves on in a coal mine. That's good. That's good yeah. stuff. It looks like a baller. The, gra the graphic's pretty cool. <laughs> that is. Brad Howe commits to WVU. Getting pads on our, is an easy hop. It's a two or three person job. Back to your old days. You imagine, uh, you imagine telling Coach Nealon, <laughs> Hey, Coach, when you have your recruits come in, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put the uniform on them, Coach. We're going to put do what? We're going to put the uniform. Then we're going to put them in a picture near a coal mine. Like, you talk about how recruiting has changed. Oh, now, that's goodness. the part that the NCAA just outlawed, right? That Those photo shoots are now you can't no do longer. Those anymore? Yeah, no longer. Really? Yeah. It was pretty cool, though. That Wait a minute. That's, that's, a that's the rule you can't violate now? That's the rule you can't violate. No pictures in a, in a Makeshift coal you mine. You can pay somebody a million dollars, but fine. you can't take a picture in front yeah, of a coal mine? can't do pictures. <laughs> Gosh. And why is that some schools don't have cameras? I don't know. Who knows? Is that re that's really the case? Who knows? But they, so I thought, I thought the trust and the football staff did a great job of just giving you the experience, yeah. right? What's a recruiting yeah. visit like? Here's the tour. Here's everything you get. Here's the go dress up and all the gear. It was great. Well done. Looks like fun. It looks like you had fun. Three guys before the game brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales, and we are quickly moving toward peak season. And right now at Lou Wendell Marine Sales, it is peak season when it comes to the selection of boats that they have. And as you probably know, if you're a regular listener, they sell Avalon pontoon boats, which are the premier pontoon boats made right here in the U.S. of A. And when it comes to all of the accessories that go along with 
being in the boat world, they've got them all. And again, the selection is the best of the season right now. So you say to yourself, well, hey, TC, what kind of stuff are we talking about? When what it are comes you talking to about? Hoppy. Talking about anchors, boat fenders, anchor line, fender line, dock line, trailer <laughs> tires, cleaning products, paddles. Fish finder. Oars, oars locks. Yeah, that three-guy special has a fish finder ready to go in it. So we strongly encourage you to check it out. It's a three guys special right now at lewendelmarinesales.com. That's lewendelmarinesales.com. Take a look at the 2023 Avalon Tri-Tune Venture 85 with 115 horsepower Honda motor. It is a delight. lewendelmarinesales.com. One more from Fantasy Camp. We, we talk a lot up here, guys, about do you like it, do you love it, or do you live it? Yeah. I'll give you a live it real quick. Bruce Irvin. Sure. So he's played, what, 11, 12 seasons now? 12. In the NFL. And by the way, could walk right now into training camp and Plan, be ready to go. Plans on totally doing Totally ready to go. Plans on doing that. I chatted with him Friday. Doesn't want to do training camp. Wants to play a full season, said no training camp. Said yeah. he wants out of that. If somebody will call him after training camp, get in, he'll play the full season. But he wants to play in September. He does. Yeah. But not in August. So <laughs> as we were leaving practice Saturday, hop. I've watched Bruce. He was with – they were doing a one-on-one -on -one defensive lineman against offensive lineman drill, just one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. And Bruce is not only watching the drill, he was in the front of the team pack, like in the very front and like, like itching Trying to, to get, go. to get in yeah, there? Like, jump, yeah, like totally dialed in, not what else is going on today, do I have a contract, are the, are the Raiders calling? Not, I mean, all he was worried about was what was happening in that one-on-one -on -one situation. He was totally – like, talk about a football guy, Tony. He was a football guy. Just sitting there on a practice in April, rain coming down, and wanting to watch two college freshmen go at each other, and he was, like, jonesing to get in. I'm in. That's, that's, right. that's living it. Yeah. That's not even loving it. That's living the thing. Mm -hmm. Pretty remarkable. That's playing in the league 12 years. It's, he doesn't have to do anything if he doesn't want. That's – to play that long in the league at that position, you kidding me? And then be still ready to go sitting there in April watching yeah. it? I was, I was just – I was blown away by the engagement of of him. I don't think. By the way, Carl Joseph. I was just gonna. I don't think oh. you've spoken enough about the silent assassin, he Carl was, Joseph. He was awesome. All those guys were great. David Sills just tremendous. Avon's perspective was really fun because it, Avon hadn't played here in twenty years, believe it or not. Twenty years. Forty three. Hoppy. So Avon you, Coburn's forty three years old, and he was. Is he still the leading rusher? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All time. Yeah. Yes. So you talk about the changes that have taken place over there. It was fun to watch with Avon and talk to Avon because he was more like like me, right? Old guy, like, oh, my gosh. So that, that was pretty wild. But Carl Joseph was, first of all, can walk right into a training camp right now and play. I mean, he is put together. No wonder he could deliver some hits. But couldn't have been more eloquent in his speaking. Could Gave great stories and insight, not just to the fantasy campers, but then he spoke to the team on Saturday morning and was just excellent with those guys as all four of those pros were. I just thought as neat of an experience as it was for the fantasy campers, and it would, in my opinion, Hop, worth it just for that part of it. To sure. be around the current and former players and Neil and the staff is is well worth the experience for somebody. But then for those former, for those current players to see those four guys sitting up there yeah. and know what they went through and then to hear them talk, that was that was invaluable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely invaluable. But Carl was, Carl was excellent. Did Carl explain how you assassinate people? <laughs> I was going to say, if he had an NIL I mean, deal he when he was still oh. here, he, I would like him, I would go with like an orthodontist because he would just absolutely rework your teeth. He would smash you. He is the silent assassin. Like, he is so chill, so quiet. He's not a loud guy at all, but, I mean, obviously he just was a bull. Is he still in the league? He considering to yeah. continue to go. Yeah, I think he'd like yeah. to. He'd yeah. like to keep going. I'd He's been in, what, six, seven? I think, he, I think six. I think he played parts of six seasons. Yeah. yeah, he's a dude. He he was tremendous. Oh, yeah. Those are, you know, here's that last thing, and then we'll move on. I keep saying last thing. What tremendous ambassadors for this program, though. Right? Treme Avon made his home here. Now makes his home here. Never left. Came and said, well, left for Canada to play up there and coach, and now back. Bruce Irvin, here two years, just says this, this is home. Sills loves coming back. Carl Joseph considers it his third home. Haiti, where he's from. Florida, where he lives. And he says, this, I say this is home feel like I'm home when yeah, I'm here. it's life-changing for a lot of these guys. Life-changing. I called Undra, by the way, Hoppy. Oh, did you? Friday, I stopped over to the reception. Totally unfair attack by Tony again. <laughs> <laughs> so Undra 
uh, we were sitting there at this little reception Friday, and Avon was there. And I said, Oh, you didn't. Oh. Yeah, so I shot a video, and I said, <laughs> I said, Hey, Andre, it's me and Avon. What's up? What's up? Listen, Avon's going to teach these guys how to run with the football. If they had a fumbling drill set up, then we would have you come over. Oh. Sent it to him. Harsh. Sent it to him about eh, maybe 30 minutes later. <laughs> got the call. Tony. <laughs> totally unfair. Uh, but you know what? Uh, he, he reached out again to me Saturday because I said, come on down here, you know, because I thought he was up home. And he went back to Valdosta, Georgia this weekend. And he was there to present scholarships that he has funded in the honor of his grandmother. Oh, my. So that's kind of stuff he's doing. Andrew would be great for the fantasy camp for the importance of getting your degree and working if football is not in your future goodness, yeah. as successful as he has been. Well, yeah. He could tell you how. I mean, he played a little bit of pro football, took the money on his release from Jimmy Johnson, who tried to run the uh, – tried to, tried to cut him without paying him. I've told you that story. Uh, you so he's with the Cowboys. He's again. with the okay. Cowboys. He gets hurt. Jimmy Johnson calls him into his office and says, okay, we're going to have to cut you. And under says, okay, you can cut me, but you got to pay me because you can't cut a player who's injured. So he got what he would tell you was probably a good chunk of seed money. That's how he came back here. Harrison County, Bridgeport, got into financial services, and the rest is history. So Jimmy Johnson tried to go back door on it, but Under knew the rule. Good job, Under. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. All right. A um, couple of other things. We'll, we'll do some pops on this. Kim Caldwell, the former Kim Stevens, now the head women's basketball coach at Tennessee. Put that into perspective. Senator. A remarkable meteoric rise not too unlike Joe Mazzulis. Fair. Now, yeah. Joe ends up at one of the most storied professional franchises in all of sports. Kim ends up at one of the, the top couple of women's basketball brands where 13 months ago she was in Glenville working with that, winning natties. It's, it's a remarkable ascension to go, what she did at Glenville, just tremendous success. We've documented that. To go to Marshall this past season, have an historic season for the herd, and then one year of that, and you're on to Tennessee, not just a power five or a big job, to the Tennessee women's basketball program. Just a remarkable rocket ship that she has been on over the last couple of years. I'm, I'm thrilled for her. She's tremendous. I think she's a wonderful coach, and this is a great opportunity with massive shoes and expectations. This is a really hard program to manage, but I can't wait to watch her in this, in this yeah, league. Er everything you said, and, and to build on the expectation, I mean, they fired a coach, who, who played for Pat Summit, who won 20 games and got to the Sweet 16. Twice. So, yeah. So the expectations are through the roof. And I'm not sure, Brad. They're unrealistic is oh, what they are. They're say, not through the roof. They're unrealistic. I'm not sure that they still sort of have this aura of Pat Summit there. Like, you need to be as successful as Pat Summit. And guess what? Nobody will be successful anymore as Pat Summit was. Not to take anything away from her, but how much has the women's game evolved mm -hmm. since Pat Summit was the coach? There are a lot more good teams now than there were back then. It's a Again, different not world. To, it's a different, it's world. a different world. So it's an incredible challenge, but also an incredible opportunity. Thrilled for her, and now you got to be a Tennessee fan. Hope she has great success. Yeah, and she and you take that 100 times out of 100. Sure. All due respect yeah. to Marshall. It, you just take, if you're offered the Tennessee job as a women's basketball coach, you got to take it even with those expectations because you know what else you have at Tennessee? You got money. You have every available resource to you. And here's what I, here's what I can't wait to watch is what that system and that way of playing does with not only NIL money, because you've got the money now to go get players, but you also can pick up the phone and literally call any player you want. Like, you can be at good Division One jobs, and you still can't call every player and get their ear. And you're at the University of Tennessee. She can call any player. Anybody that's available, she calls and says, I'm, hey, I'm Tennessee. I'd like to talk to you. Okay, gotcha. So I'm fascinated to watch how that does. So massive expectations, unrealistic expectations, given where the world is, but unlimited resources as well to go in and, and try and do something there. I can't wait to watch her. Yeah, it's that the analogy with Missoula is similar. MEC, all they do is turn out massive coaches. How about Jared Calhoun? 
He left the MEC, left Fairmont State. Now he's a head coach at Utah State. If you want to get to the highest level of sports, you just go through the MEC. Don't forget Haywood Highsmith, Wheeling Jesuit at the time, former yeah. MEC basketball player of the year, been yeah. in the NBA, played in the NBA Finals. Yeah. Just go to the MEC. MEC is where it starts. Yeah. Where futures are started. Sure. It's the, it's the current day version of the MAC for football. Well, commissioner. Or Iowa. In Com football. The commissioner of that league, Reed Amos, he'll probably build on that, won't he? He should. He will. They should do a little. Yeah. They should do a little institutional ads on that and say, "Here, here's where our people go." It you want to get um, to the top? Start here. It was. Uh, it was interesting too. Lots of times, Brad, you come from this side. When coaches leave, the the university doesn't say anything, right? They don't put out a release. Marshall did. Congratulations. She had great success here. Wish her all the best. Quotes from the AD, quotes from the president of the university. And that I think that helps your coaching hire. You go out and you're looking for somebody and go, I'm sorry we lost our coach. She went to Tennessee. That helps you. Yeah, I, I think it does too. I think that's a smart branding move to go ahead and try yeah. and hook onto that and ride it and say to the next coach. Because okay, here's the reality of the situation, guys. We've talked about this a million times. You, your coaches just aren't staying 10 and 15, 20 years anymore. Now, one, as, as we've seen, that's Marshall's got to be bummed out by that. I get that. But for the next, okay, go get the next coach then. Go hire another good coach. And also, they're taking over a program that just won 20-plus games and went to the NCAA tournament. So you're not taking over a dumpster fire. You guys ready for a little healing? Sure. Hoppy, you ready for a little sure. healing? I mean, sure. after the after the week that you had last week, you probably need a little. Yeah. Probably need a little healing, don't you? Yeah. Time now for Textual Healing, brought to us by our website, episode800.com, where you will have the opportunity to take a look at all of the many items that we provide for you, the listener. From apparel, hats, pullovers, tees, fluffy slippers, coffees, popcorns, got it all. Hankies. Hankies, we don't have yet. Oh. Coming, coming soon. Maybe the fall collection. <clears throat> Ready to go now for allergy season. <laughs> That's right. We should. We missed. We missed, missed pollen. That, missed yeah. pollen. All right, here we go from the text line. Hello, three guys. I was at the introduction ceremony of Coach DeVries at the Coliseum. It was great to meet you guys. I wanted you two to know that I was the one who texted you a few months ago about my brother, Terry Voidhofer, who was the captain of the 1971 Mountaineer football team. Here you go, Senator. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. You remember him? Very nice. Uh, he was the guy that sent us the video where the team entered Old Mountaineer Field and then beat the living snot out of each other oh, in yeah. the pregame. Uh, yeah. I was nine years old at the time, and I remember that vividly. My passion for college football has followed through. I've now attended games in 63 of 131 current Division One stadiums my wow. goal before i die is to attend the game at all 131 wow my last comment is i wish i would have showed you the hankies which i had in my pockets that day both of them clean Excellent. one in my right pocket look up one in my right pocket was white see the picture the left pocket red hmm. i've carried that one for nearly 25 years that being one of my dad's hankies he passed away april of 14 1999 42-year coal miner, never missed one day of work. Wow. That is a fact. My hero in life. Hope to meet Hoppy someday so we can share hanky stories. Hmm. David Scott Voidhofer, Moundsville, West Virginia, by way of Smithfield, Pennsylvania. Love that story. It's nice. <laughs> Got that constant reminder of his dad. Yeah. Well done. Stunning announcement there, though, that uh, he would like to meet you someday. Once again, proving that you are oftentimes distant from the people who love you. The event was at 11 a.m. Eastern. And Lord knows you never miss your show. <laughs> Fair Lord, knows, Lord knows that. Fair retort <clears throat> on your part. Greetings, gentlemen. <laughs> Just finished listening to the Jaquay interview. What a great representative for the program and university. I wanted to st share you a quick story about Jaquay. Last year at the Penn State game, we're underneath the stadium after the game. Team's leaving. My kids and my neighbor's kids were standing there watching the players as they came out of the locker room. They grabbed some food, and then they got onto the bus. While many of the guys smiled and said hi, Jaquay stopped and talked with us for a few minutes. He may not want to share this, but it was hilarious. 
He grabbed a smoothie from the table and handed it to one of our kids. They loved it. Look at the picture. Unsolicited. He also gave my daughter a pair of his gigantic gloves. They're proudly displayed at home today. After a difficult loss, he made time to make those kids smile and gave them a memory that will last for a lifetime. We're forever Jaquay fans. There nice. you go. Awesome. Underneath the it stadium, is. that's how they hand that's the food awesome. out to get on the bus. They will, those kids will never forget that. Right never. on brand, Tony. Right on brand for him. Yeah. Uh, Mike writes in, three guys, I received your thank you note for the Honey Bell oranges that you received from Hal Groves. We hope you enjoyed them. A longtime listener now living and working. At uh, He's the contact uh, director there for Hal Groves. So while you were oh, gone, yeah. Vero Beach, Florida, by the way, is South Charleston. So happy uh, that. There's an orchard uh, down there named Hale Groves, and they sent us a box of oranges. Oh. And they were, like he said, they're called honey bells. They've got this little cute little top on these oranges. Okay. I gave one to Jaquay. He texted me later in the day, said, that's the best orange I've ever eaten in my really? life. <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, Bob and Beaver. Who's that from? Mike sent us those? Yeah. He's Thank at, you, he Mike. works at Hale Groves? Yeah. Hey, Mike, if they've got, like, surplus and that stuff goes spoiler or anything like that, feel free to send us a couple of cases. We'll take care of them for you. <laughs> We're really worried here about scurvy, and so we eat a lot of citrus. Yeah, Thank you. Vitamin C. Yeah. From where? Hale Groves? Yeah. Vero H- Beach, Florida? Just like it sounds. H-A-L-E, Hale Groves. Unbelievable oranges. Mm-hmm. Bob in Beaver, Pennsylvania writes, this is my real name and a real place. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar. Hey, three guys, I laughed out loud in my, in my car when Jaquay – Hubbard's that team up north comment came out. As someone living in midst of Panthers fans, that was tremendous. I'm looking forward to Tony's food courts this fall and episode 800. We doing that again? Oh, yeah, we're doing it. I say we. I didn't do anything. but No, you were there. I, you, you'll always have our respect for being there as long as you were and coming up. That was great. Matter of fact, Brad, I think you could say this weekend we did a test kitchen for the food court, wouldn't you say? Yeah, we did test a little bit. We did. I did some tests. What did you do? You cooked? Yeah, I did. What did you make? Uh, it was Final Four subs. Oh, Final Four subs. I always have, a, I, I don't I shouldn't say always, for years I did made subs mm-hmm. on the Final Four day. So I took it to a different level this year. Made the sub rolls myself. Really? Yeah. And then what, have a little get-together? Yeah. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, no I'm doubt. Gonna, I'm going to invite you. You're sick. You got all kinds of germs crawling all over you. Didn't want you breathing all over the bread. You were close to getting an invite. Then I talked to you that one day and went, hello. I went like, hey, Hop, how are you? Hope you feel better. That's why why he called you. You were going to get an invite. Would have been nice to turn down. Like, no, I'm Uh, I'm sick. I turned it it down for you. (laughs) I'm listening to you now. You sound like you need a couple packs of Marlboros. I mean, what are we doing? (laughs) You hear him over there, Senator? I do. I mean, gosh. Call it that way, please. Get a chest, Sorry. Get a chest x-ray. I did get one. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> I got a chest x-ray. Food was very good. His bread was very good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. One of the people. You that, also had some RevKev barbecue there, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, one of the people there attacked me unfairly. Who? Loman's wife went after me hard. I For think what? she was right. She was right. She, she attacked me and then wrote me a text the next day continuing her theme. What was what was the uh, attack? What was it about? Brad, you tell it because he no, won't be ahead. objective. No, he'll he'll tell it. Then I'll give the I'll give the real story. Go ahead. Let me find a text from her. So I get this on Sunday. I thoroughly enjoyed the sausage after church today. I enjoyed it more today than I would have yesterday because I was too full to appreciate the flavor of it. In my opinion, if you want to serve that much food, you will need to make it a two day event. Call it the Tony Food Fest. And instead of eating as much food as you possibly can in two hours, that way people can watch you prepare the food like an artist and not be yelled at to eat more. Just my opinion. Thank you again. So she says that I yell at people and tell them to eat more than they want. That's really about as spot on of a text describing (laughs) what happens as I've ever heard. I mean, she couldn't be more accurate. Now, you know, I'm right in there eating as much as I possibly can. I was miserable, couldn't sleep all night, had terrible heartburn, had to sleep sitting up for a while. I mean, it was totally t- about went down. Couldn't sleep. Got two hours of sleep. So she's 100% right, but it was excellent. Did subs, sausage and peppers, and pork barbecue. But but you had an, one angry guest, one sick guest. Found, sounds like Wasn't I dodged sick. a bullet. Wasn't sick. That's how he rolls. He knew what was coming. Came in, said, I haven't eaten all day. Ready. Let's go. 
Don't worry about me. Well, I certainly didn't. Yeah. You couldn't answer the call. You couldn't answer. Oh, old iron long hoppy. Text her. I was, Hi. Out, I was out of town. <laughs> I wore my efforting shirt to the Savannah Bananas baseball game yesterday. Unfortunately, it was hidden under a sweater because it's so cold. I love the interview with Jaquay. Please make that, please effort the making of a I never minded it shirt. I giggled all day long about the interview. You guys are great. MJ and Savannah. I never minded it. Text her. I just want to correct the record. Sport management is in the College of Applied Human Sciences, not the business college. The program has many successful graduates, including the current GM of the San Francisco Giants. I have no recollection of saying that Who said it was in the sport business management college? was in the business college, but the way that they changed the numbers, the, the schools, and this school's now this school, and I, mean, I can't keep track. I don't know. I can't follow. I don't remember anybody saying that. Okay, if we did. But you by the way, don't need to tell us who the current GM of the Giants is. That'd be Pete Petula, former intern of mine. Didn't you hire him? Intern. Yeah. Worked for you. Was Scope. very efficient running the Papa John's halftime shootout before he went on to, <laughs> to run, the run a successful Major League <laughs> Baseball franchise. I'll negotiate this $200 million contract, but first let me remember my Hi. days. Hire Pete. Oh, Pete, can you go uh, handle the Kroger shopping cart shootout? <laughs> oh, thank you. Can you roll these T-shirts? Now, Pete's the GM of the Giants, and I'm talking to you two clowns. <laughs> <laughs> he passed you by. Didn't uh, see a him. lot. Didn't even see him. <laughs> Went by you so fast. <laughs> Scopes, Senator, and in your best rock voice, the Dean, who has returned to the studio. We're about halfway through the open transfer window for the basketball team and have only seen about half the roster enter the portal. Particularly interesting since the three guys line has been at one and a half for guys to stay. One might think it would be better to enter the portal sooner than later. Thus the question, does slow walking their departure give the players any leverage with WVU to possibly incentivize them to free up their spot, paying a severance to encourage them to move on. No, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. No. Hey, we'll give you a ten grand leave. No, you can't do that. Uh, TC Brad Hoppy, Mothman having a kerchief ale is memorialized by an artist in Charleston. Look at that. There he is. Mothman having a hoppy beer. Nice. There you go. Ryan in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Uh, the last time someone brought your name up on the show, you weren't here. I said, I don't know where he is. I said, maybe we got to put it on an Amber Alert. And this guy says, Tony, Amber Alerts are for kids. Our friend Hoppy would technically be in silver <laughs> alert. A silver is activated when an elderly, developmentally, or cognitively impaired person has gone missing and is determined to be at risk. Yeah. See me driving down the highway. <laughs> whatever, whatever color it needs to be. Oh boy, we can't keep track of them. Pete from Pinehurst. Following the WVU Iowa game, the general take was that the referees, ESPN, were not in control of the uh, of the overcome of the, the refs. Just got lost in the. Uh, let me use this again. Following the West Virginia Iowa game, the general take was that the referees the NCAA, the ESPN, were not in control of the outcome. The refs just got lost in the moment. After watching Iowa UConn, is the take still the same? Pete from Pinehurst. No, I thought the referees did a nice job in that game. That was a – Brad and I were texting back and forth on that call – and Brad sent me a slow-mo text, two points. One, it was the right call, okay? It was the right call. The only question is the age-old question, do you make that call at that point in the game, blah, blah, blah. But it was the right call, in my opinion. It was absolutely the right call. As someone that owns a UConn national championship ring from women's basketball, I can say that was the right call. She, was, she did three things, the Connecticut player. She was moving, in fact. She chicken winged, brought the arm out, which you can't do, and her she legs were her leg wider out. and her legs were wider than shoulders. It's a foul. Happened to come at a critical moment, but if you don't call that, then it's too big of an advantage for Connecticut. It was a foul. 
I don't care who wins that game. Rick Buecher from ESPN did a really good breakdown on Twitter. And he's played the game, written the game, has ref the game as well. And you're right. Technically, that was a moving screen. Her Her base was wider than her hips. She made movement, initiated contact. His whole thing. And she brought the elbow up. I gave three points. All three of those are accurate. His whole thing was where he disagrees with you guys. He didn't think that an advantage, disadvantage, that it was going to be a disadvantage. So technically it was Gabby Marshall completely out of her where she was going. He thought she took she took, he thought that she took a bad angle to get through and threw flailed her arms up. But anyway, disagree. Okay, if if the and Rick's not the definitive source on that. So no, it's one person's one opinion. opinion. Like yours, player, one person's opinion. If the UConn because it was the screen to set up a shot at the end of the game. At the end of the game. To free so, the shooter. To free the shooter. So, which so was so Paige Beckers. Shoot, which was Paige Beckers. So if Paige Beckers had made the shot then, then you got to come back to advantage, disadvantage. Next did, text. What, was it giving Paige Beckers an advantage it, it for did. the shot? It, it's, it's really not even debatable. Next. It was a moving screen. It was a moving screen. You can't – I mean, I get it. I get it. It's, it's horrifically unfortunate that that happened. I would have loved to see her get a shot to see what she would have done with it. I, really I, thought G, I thought Gino had a very interesting response. Yeah. I guess we have to work on her. Since we got called four times, I guess we have to work on her. Probably does. Screens. You know, Gina's one of my favorite people in the world. I know. you. you but imagine that. Gino. The greatest women's basketball coach of all time is getting screwed by the officials. That's what some are claiming. Yeah. I, th- I thought at first, I thought at first, bad call, you don't make that there. Then when you sent me that video, I thought. Mm, That's why sense. I give that official a lot of credit. As much as we get on officials, to he saw it in real time or she. I don't remember which official made the call. I good call. I don't think it's particularly close. Tony, I wouldn't like it. No, I no, I don't have a problem with okay. it. And, and to be quite honest with you, it doesn't look as blatant when you're looking at it straight ahead. If you look at it from it's, behind, oh, yeah. I mean, it's blatant. Where the official was. But it's let me just say it. this about this, Pete okay. from Pinehurst, which is not your name. Um, if you, if you, but you, 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 the your question, the way you wrote it, I think you're in, you're you're implying that we. I said I don't think that the fix was in. I think if you're implying at all that that was a call that they made. <laughs> Just to get Iowa in there, I still you, you no, would go for ten thousand no. years. I'm not buying that because again, you were in essence then the conspiracy was against the greatest women's basketball coach of all time. That's who's not getting calls because of an agenda. You're not going to cha- change. Anyway, here we go, Tony. I know that long texts are a no-no, but I felt a need to send it in as an example of what the Mountaineers mean to people from this state. It's just one example from many that others could share. My dad was a retired coal miner of 32 years, and when I was just a young boy in the mid-70s, he'd wake me up at 3 a.m., and on the rear Saturday that he was not working, we'd head to Monroe County to go squirrel hunting. He had an old silver transistor radio that he would wrap with flannel cut from an old jacket for camouflage that he would find an old oak tree, I would sit on one side and he would sit on the other with the radio between us to listen to the game while we waited for the occasional squirrel to show. The crispness and smell of fall with all the colors always reminds me of those wonderful times. He instilled in me that flying WV is bigger than all of us and means so much more to such a small state. He lost his battle with cancer during halftime of the Alabama game in 2014 in a hospital bed in Beckley. We were down 20 to 17, but he still had enough in him to tell me, got him right where we want him. He never predicted a losing season ever. This is the type of story I wish all new coaches here could hear. Keith from Cole City. That's a great one. Yeah. That's an all time great one. That's and I think that's there are a lot of stories like that. You know, I'm that doing, I'm gonna I'm gonna save that one. I'm gonna bring that over to that new basketball coach. Oh, we'll take that over that's to him. That's a good and idea. Because I don't, uh, I think those help. Text her. So I'm headed to Phoenix for a vacation, going through Cleveland. We didn't think about it at the time, but the flight's totally booked with people going to the Final Four. NC State, Purdue fans, I strike up a conversation with an NC State fan, and he tells me I'm a West Virginia fan. He says, my dad's a huge West Virginia fan. 
he'd be talking your ear off about right now. His dad grew up in Charleston on Bigley Avenue. Of course he did. About 15 minutes from me. Always a connection. Texter Sean from Raleigh. Whew. I'm kind of glad that women's basketball season is over. All the controversy, pettiness, flat-out idiocy. It was exhausting over the weekend, and it left me with a raging case of the red ass. I feel like I heard something. Don't you all have something on episode 800.com for that? It sure would come in handy. (laughs) I love me some low-hanging fruit. Have a great week. Yeah, we were talking about that. I thought it was a great couple weeks for women's basketball. Well, the, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. There was a I mean, lot except of, for the West Virginia loss. There's a I, lot of there was a lot of stuff back and forth, and dem- it was you know speaking of Connecticut, your girl Tarasi, Senator, mm-hmm. you know, downplaying Caitlin Clark. A lot of shade, a lot of shade being thrown all over the place. Hop on this stuff. Welcome to the world today. Yeah, stunning. everybody just wants to complain about everything. Texter, it was a remarkable few weeks for women's basketball. Remarkable. Not, and, I and, mean. And what Coach, historic few weeks. And what Coach Daly said about Caitlin Clark mm-hmm. right after they won the national championship. Yeah, that was that was top shelf stuff there. Yeah. Yep. I do think that the question now is how how well does Caitlin Clark, the popularity translate into into the pros? I mean, it, clearly it'll have an impact. There's no question about that. But attendance at the WNBA started out in 1996, 1998, something like that, at about 10,000. And has been steadily declining, slowly but steadily declining. Took a big dip during COVID. Now it's back up. Last year it was like sixty six hundred. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I mean it's it's going to be a bump, but I think it's difficult to translate because at at Iowa at a college, a major university, you have a built in. That's built in. I mean, there are decades of people who are fans of that university who then, when there's a reason given, want to come back and be part of the experience. I'm just not sure you have that same level of commitment at the WNBA. Yeah, I disagree. I think I think it pops, and here's why. Okay. Because it's built around the NBA model where stars matter and you go to watch stars, doesn't matter where you are. The Phoenix Mercury also disagree with you. They have already put out uh, graphics and social media fires to sell tickets to Tarasi's Phoenix Mercury team against an unnamed unspecified <laughs> individual for the Indiana Fever. Yeah. They have like a silhouette with the number 22 in there. Oh, wow. They're already selling tickets. She hasn't been drafted by the Fever yet. And the Phoenix Mercury are, are capitalizing on that. I think you're going to, as this show becomes national and it's immediate, that's the other thing. I mean, she's going to be tired, right? How exhausted must she be? That draft's next week. So the Fever take her, tickets are going to start being sold, and she's playing here in just a couple months. You don't have to wait till next basketball season. I think early on, at least these first few months, it's going to pop tremendously well. And as she hits these new markets that she hasn't been in yet, I think there's going to be a ton of kids at those games. I think there's an early one year at least bump for their attendance. Now, where it goes from there, who knows? But this is a this is a massive story. I think it's going to draw early. I, I think it's I think it's a good point about it is a continuation because yeah. there's no lag. Yeah. But does it have the long term staying power? We'll see. Yeah. That's hard for anything to have long term staying power. Yeah, but. Because the, because again the WNBA is kind of you know the, the attendance has leveled off. But they need they time. need stars. Yeah, they do. They need, need stars. stars. And, and there's well, been great th- players that have come in, but they haven't captured the the attention like the Caitlin Clark has. And then can you keep that riding, which then showcases some of the other stars exactly. in WNBA. Yeah, that's, that's true. And what you got in this tournament was you got other stars that were highlighted because people were watching more, more people were watching the games. Correct. So, so Angel yeah. Reese, Angel, are, yeah. a name that's already known, is elevated yeah. up. Juju Watkins at USC. Right. Paige Beckers, it elevates up. So you know those names, but Caitlin Clark brought you to the TV set. Exactly. Later today, we'll find out if the women's championship game outdrew the men. Could well, be. it could for, happen for those of us who couldn't stay up till midnight. Yeah. Well, hey, three guys, I had what? the pleasure. Late. Yeah. I had the pleasure to be a part of family day with the WVU football team at Milan Pushkar Stadium this past Saturday. Other than seeing my son practicing with the team, the highlight of the day was catching up with Brad. Oh, here's photographic proof. Don't let the beard fool you. <laughs> Brad still has me by a couple of years. Enjoy and appreciate all you guys do. Let's go. Mountaineers, Brandon and Barrickville. And then there's a so family. That, yeah. Yeah, so that's Brandon Flower, former Mountaineer Brandon Flower. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. And yeah. then that's his son, Nate, played at Fairmont Seniors, a kicker for the WVU team. One of the specialists. Yeah, outstanding. And, of course, his wife, 
whose brother was Scott Moore, one of the former Mountaineers as well. So it's a family of two former Mountaineers in it. We had a pretty bizarre situation last week. A senator and I, high-level three guys meeting over there at Mountaineer Roasting, having coffee with Dave, our mm -hmm. business manager, right. and a high-level official from Google. Excuse me? Yeah, a lot, going, a lot going on. The Google? While you were down, we had a lot going on. Yeah. Thank you for carrying on. So a young man, we're at a table, young man walks in, takes a seat at the bar, brings his laptop <laughs> computer, puts his laptop computer down. So I happen to be gazing over. What, looking at his stuff? From a distance. It doesn't matter from a distance, you're still looking at his stuff. Well, when what's on the screen is me, and him oh. and you, I went, would you look at that? Oh. So this young fella is watching three guys before the game. He's got oh. earbuds in, and he's watching it. And I said, I said, look at this. Dude's watching three guys. Did you freak him out and walk over? And Yeah. yeah. Of course. Of course. So that was Blake from Nitro. So there he oh. is, right there. Grad student in occupational therapy. Wonderful young man. Excellent. We had a great so conversation. He was so he just walked over and just like, yeah, we just went up to him mind. and said, yo, man, what's up? <laughs> Walk over and go, three guys alive. <laughs> we did, uh, and he said, oh, stunning surprise, no hoppy. No, he didn't say that. I just made that. Uh, but we always ask, what well, we always ask people when they come to us and say they listen, the question is what? Why? Why are you listening to this? What do you like? And he does, I mean, this guy's, I mean, he's an occupational therapist, right? He's in there. And he said, I do my homework. Listen to you guys. How does he do that? How do you? How does he do homework and listen to kids are like that nowadays? They can multitask better. Yeah, they do a lot more. Older generation, yeah. yeah, generation. But anyway, it was great to see him, and uh, he listens. He likes to listen to the old episodes when he drives back home. So it was good to see him. So it, nice. it was kind of it was a first for us. We looked at uh, we looked at the computer and said he's watching us. So thanks, Blake. Yeah. Um, I restocked some shelves while I was over there too. Put our game day grind out. <laughs> yeah. You work every place you go. Randy from State College writes in, I've not texted in a while, and until recently I did not know why. Although I listened to the show faithfully, I just was not inspired to write. In retrospect, I think I was in a bit of depression. The basketball season wasn't shaping up as I had hoped. Although the team expended a lot of energy, the results just were not there. I couldn't help myself to think about what Bob Huggins would have done with that team. Wishful thinking, I know, but it was hard to watch. I'm guessing a lot of Mountaineer Nation felt the same. Fast forward. Last several podcasts have been great. You've lifted me from the doldrums. Football and basketball, men and women, are all pointed up. I'm excited for the possibilities. Just wanted to know how much your efforts are appreciated, even the halftimer. Oh, okay. The three of you are fabulous. I love the show. It's a great thing about sports. Move forward. Yeah. Just like a just like a Lint, three guys will always be there in every corner. Texter, does it seem Coach DeVries will continue the tradition of letting alumni players headquarter their offseason training? out of the university facilities. I think it's probably a TBA. That's probably a TBA. Obviously, you got to let the – when you got a new homeowner, yeah. you got to let the new homeowner go in there and set up his house. Yeah. So, That'd be surprising if they didn't, though. That's a, it, that's over a time. bonus to have those guys around. Yeah, over yeah. time. Over time, I think so. Um, to, uh, here's a food tip from a texter. Quick tip for Jaquay. And the scrambled eggs. He said he'd been eating a lot of eggs mm. lately. Yeah, okay. Anyway. Mix those up in a bowl. Pop those in the microwave for a couple of minutes or so. It says they come out nice and fluffy and doesn't stick to the bowl like it does the pan. So there you go. Jaquay was doing hard-boiled eggs, though, not scrambled. Same thing. So it's hard-boiled. Eggs and you egg can't, the discussion. I told you about that. When I tried to do hard-boiled <laughs> eggs, happened? What happened? I time? blew the microwave open. <laughs> Lucky I survived. <laughs> It exploded. <laughs> Wait a second. You said you don't mean the door actually opened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come 
Because you thought you could hard boil them by putting them in the microwave. I did. I, I did. <laughs> and the door blowed up? Oh, my gosh. That's a stunning yak by you. It How did major, you? Major, major I mean, a mistake. guy. That doesn't seem, that's out of character. What, what was I mean, going I was, on? What was, it, this was I a, mean, that sounds like a scene from Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> it was a, I told you that. I Way told to go, you that story. Beavis. I know I had him. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in the kitchen, and I thought, oh, you can probably do this. I didn't even, th- I don't know. And it was happening, and I was away from the microwave, like the mic, and that thing shot open, <laughs> bam, and just shot eggs like across the kitchen, right against the refrigerator. Everything. If I'd if I'd have been in front of it, I'd have been seriously hurt. <laughs> it took an hour to clean that up. Yeah, what a mess. No, yeah, that's you know some come into work. That's way out of character. Come into work. You think yeah. Karen wasn't around to check that with? Uh, she was around, but she was just like not paying attention. <laughs> and you didn't ask. You no. were unsure. I, that's see. I thought you would have asked. Yeah. Karen, can I hard boil these in the microwave? And you would have got an emphatic no. Major fail. Major, Major fail. fail. Come into work. Do uh, you hear the word? No. What happened? Uh, we lost Hoppy. <laughs> Excuse me. First of all, yeah, got hit in the back of the head Hop- with an egg. Hoppy's gone. Well, what what happened? A car accident or anything like that? Now I got killed by an egg. <laughs> hard boil egg took him down. Hit him right in the chest. Blew the, door, the microwave. Tried the best well, they could. Not a hard boiled egg because it couldn't get hard boiled in the microwave. Tried Jeez. the best they could to get that heart started again, but it hit him right. <laughs> boom, he's gone. Good thing you weren't here when we were talking to Jaquay about that. <sighs> yeah, really. Jaquay's got it figured out. Yeah. He knows how to do it. He's got it. Cold right. water bath. Mountain keeps the player ship. misses spring drills. <laughs> egg egg injury. <laughs> What's it? <laughs> DNP EGG. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, sweet mercy. Oh, boy. All right, we've accomplished a bunch of nothing. Good to be back. How long you like? Well, you think we might see you two in a row? Or how's that going? When's the next show? Uh, what's Effort. today? We're figuring it out. I'll probably, I'll probably be here. I got an idea yeah. on Summer Series, too. I gave it to him. I'll, I'll share with you. I think I told you, too. You told me. I, I, have, I have a little bit different idea. I, mean, I think it's a good idea, but I, I have an idea. Oh, I'm on- sorry. Your mic stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I get, I'm not here enough to have legitimate input. So. so you've lost. Like, if this were like a vote, like you get a Hoppy gets half a vote. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Hop. You lost two to a half. Sorry. Thanks to our producer, Austin Wright. Three guys before the game brought to us by Comax Business Systems. Keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. They're absolutely fabulous. If you're in the business world and you need business gear, phone lines, digital phone systems, they have all of that reasonably priced. They'll come in and do a free quote. ComaxWV.com. By GoMart, get all those rewards points. Get your GoMart rewards card at GoMart.com. Download the app. That's the best way to do it. And you can ring up some savings. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. Until we meet again, we'll be back. Yeah. Subscribe or follow because we don't know when we'll be back. Yeah. Subscribe on YouTube's, uh, wherever on uh, wherever you get your podcast on Apple. Just subscribe every time we get a new one in. We'll do that thing. Thursday? Friday? We'll see. We'll see. Everything. Efforting on that. Monday? Well, nah, who knows? We'll, we'll be back. We'll be around. Thanks for listening. See you.